Have you ever wondered if there's water on Mars? In this episode of Blue Planet Red, we'll show you how NASA has not only found water on Mars, but they've done so practically everywhere. In 1987, Dr. John Brandenburg was the first scientist to publish his research on how Mars used to have an ocean in the distant past. Back then, the scientific community was reluctant to agree with Dr. Brandenburg's conclusions, but today, the Mars ocean theory is widely accepted. The ocean on Mars was so large, it covered nearly the entire northern hemisphere. Mars was another blue planet, like Earth, but when we look at photos of Mars today, at first glance, it looks like a desert wasteland, dry as a bone. The funny thing is, it's not. Despite our first impressions, there's still water on Mars today. In fact, it's almost everywhere we look. Here's Korolev Crater, near the North Pole of Mars. It's 50 miles wide, filled with ice. If you were to melt it all, it would equal over 500 cubic miles of water. But that's just a small percentage of polar ice, relative to the rest of the northern ice cap. It's over 600 miles in diameter, a small sea of water ice. But the polar caps aren't the only place where ice is found. Upon its controlled descent to the surface of Mars in 2008, the Phoenix Lander's retro rockets heated ice just beneath the soil to form condensation on its landing struts. How do we know there's ice beneath the surface? Well, after it landed, the Phoenix lander revealed these ice deposits with its robotic arm just a few centimeters beneath the surface. If you were on Mars, you could kneel down and find it just as easily. Meteor impacts can also reveal ice deeper down into the crust. Deeper still, several hundred meters beneath the surface, the European Space Agency detected miles-long ice deposits, about the size of the Red Sea here on Earth. If it were melted, it would cover the entire surface of Mars with about two meters of water. Back on the surface, moisture is pulled from the atmosphere and absorbed into the soil to form faint trickles of salt water through a process known as deliquescence. The water evaporates quickly, but we've managed to photograph these water trickles from rovers and orbiters. Transient frost has been observed near the equator, on top of the Tharsis volcanoes, enough to fill 60 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Given these faint trickles of water, frost, and the ice just beneath the soil, it should come as no surprise that mud would form, as seen here on one of the Curiosity rover's wheels. But perhaps most exciting is the prospect of a winter wonderland on Mars. This image, photographed by the Viking 2 lander in 1976, shows snowfall. Just a light dusting here, but Dr. Sylvain Picou, a research scientist at JPL Caltech, was quoted as saying, enough falls that you could snowshoe across it. Where does this snow come from? That's right, clouds full of water. The Curiosity rover took these photographs, clearly showing clouds moving in the Martian sky. As we know from studying life here on Earth, bacteria can live essentially anywhere, even under extreme temperatures or pressures once thought to be inhospitable to life. While we don't yet understand life's origins, it's safe to say that where we find water we find life. There's water on Mars, right now. Maybe we should take a closer look. This is the first episode in the continuing series of Blue Planet Red, an award-winning documentary film on the history, evidence for life, and catastrophes that contributed to the death of Mars. 
The documentary includes interviews with NASA's lead astrobiologist, university professors, aerospace industry scientists, and independent researchers. If Mars was like Earth in the distant past, could there still be life there now? What happened to it? And what turned a blue planet red? Thank you.